It finally happened, the GBT store officially launches. We've been waiting for it since its announcement in November and it promises to give us access to thousands of well-trained models and let us earn money by selling our own models. Let's look at what's coming to ChatGBT and a few more exciting things about the upcoming Google Bard update and Apple's secret Siri AI. So a few days back, OpenAI started sending emails to people announcing the upcoming launch. We want to let you know that we will launch the GPT store next week. And the next part is interesting because this update actually requires us to do something. Review our updated usage policies and GPT brand guidelines to ensure that your GPT is compliant. Don't worry, we will go over it all in a minute. Verify your builder profile and publish your GPT as public. Now let's take a look at those usage policies and guidelines. We don't want our GBT to not get accepted, right? So what's not allowed? These policies look like stuff that you, a user, can't do, but they surely apply to the models themselves. One, illegal activity. OpenAI prohibits the use of our models, tools, and services for illegal activity. This one is pretty basic and obvious. No one wants their products to be used for illegal stuff. Further down the line, there will be a couple of clarifications regarding this illegal activity that I believe hint us at real possibilities of ChatGPT and GPTs. Two, you can pause the video and read this for yourself. We don't want to get demonetized here. Three, generation of hateful, harassing, or violent content. Again, there is not much to discuss here except the fact that this part of the usage policies talks about stuff that gets automatically blocked if you try to generate something like this. And to me, this means that OpenAI knows that there are ways to write prompts in such a way that the automatic system will not stop AI from generating forbidden stuff. Of course, I'm not trying to make people look for this secret prompt, but still, I find it interesting. Generation of malware, content that attempts to generate code that is designed to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to a computer system. This one I find to be one of the most interesting parts of these usage guidelines. If you try and read between the lines, it would seem like with enough persuasion, it's possible to trick ChatGPT and train GPTs to generate malicious code. I am not sure that we can just ask to write us code for a worm, but the presence of this text means that some when at OpenAI successfully generated a working code for a malicious software, virus, or something like that. And of course, you shouldn't even try to do something like this, but I feel like this part of the policy doesn't allow creating GPTs that will analyze the code of an application file for malware. Yes, there are antivirus programs already embedded in all operating systems, but as an exercise for novice programmers or something like hackathons, this could be a nice thing to have. Activity that has high risk of physical harm, including <coughs> development, military, management, or operation of critical infrastructure in energy, transportation, and water. Again, I feel like this usage policy is basically a description of everything that is possible with ChatGPT and GPTs. Who would even try using ChatGPT for developing such dangerous things? Can we just ask ChatGPT to give us schematics for a rocket? Or can it help with developing its design? This all sounds very interesting to me because it also hints at the information that OpenAI used to train its model. I wonder how many secret and leaked documents were used to train ChatGPT, but you, dear viewer, please don't try to do anything like this. Don't create GPTs for the Pentagon or something like that. The next one for me sounds a bit ironic. Fraudulent or deceptive activity, including scams, plagiarism, academic dishonesty. Plagiarism and academic dishonesty. There should be a joke somewhere, but I can't figure out where. I don't know what's funnier. The fact that OpenAI doesn't want to use its product for plagiarizing someone's work, or the fact that they used a ton of materials themselves to train their algorithms. Because there have been a lot of scandals regarding the information that was used for training Training, from stolen artwork to full articles that can be accessed by writing your prompt in a certain way. But if we look at this text from a practical standpoint, it basically means that you cannot create a custom GPT that will write your homework for you. This is very sad, but let's close our eyes and pretend we didn't read that. Activity that violates people's privacy, including tracking or monitoring an individual without their consent, facial recognition of private individuals, classifying individuals based on protected characteristics, using biometric for identification or assessment. Again, I see this as proof that GPTs can be trained to do facial recognition, track people, work with biometrics, and so on. I didn't even know that there was a possibility to trick ChatGPT into doing something like this, but apparently 
There is a way. I wonder what happens if we feed our custom GPT a bunch of photos of me and ask it to identify me in group photos. This sounds like a very fun video to try, don't you think? Leave a comment if you want me to try it in one of our next videos. I feel like GPTs hold many secret and hidden abilities, but let's not dwell on the stuff we cannot do and look at how our GPTs must look and act in order to be accepted into the store. There is a special section about GPTs in brand guidelines titled GPTs in ChatGPT. GPTs should have a short name appropriate for display in ChatGPT sidebar, choose a name appropriate for an app or service, not the title of a document or video, having a GPT's name and with GPT is discouraged, but not prohibited. Do I need to clarify any of this? This is just pure branding, nothing more. A GPT may not use another organization's trademark in its name or logo unless they're authorized to do so. Builders must verify their domain in order to use many common trademarks and OpenAI may reactively enforce this for others if reported. This one is more interesting because this basically cuts out all those GPTs that pretend to be official GPTs of certain brands. This means it won't be allowed to create a GPT that's going to impersonate support agent with the goal of stealing private data. This is a big win. Yes, the fact that this rule is hidden in branding seems counterintuitive, but still. Additionally, names referencing public figures, profanity, and harmful topics are prohibited. If a GPT makes use of third-party services, for example, as part of its actions, these may be mentioned in the description. Yep, you heard it right. No more Elon Musk GPT or impersonating someone's manner of speech. Congrats, OpenAI, you made GPTs boring. Of course, I'm exaggerating a bit here, and if you name your GPT correctly, it would be allowed in the store, but still, this just takes a lot of fun out of the platform. As for the branding guidelines, there is not much else to talk about. None of these two documents say anything about the GPTs or the store itself. How will it work? How will it be monetized? What will the developer's cut be? Will we still be limited to around 25 messages per hour? I guess we'll just have to wait and see for ourselves. So how about we look at more practical things? Let's verify our builder's profile. Without a verified profile, we will not be able to publish our GPTs in the store, so do not skip this step. Do it, head over to settings, find the tab that says builder profile and click on it. Right now we have two options to verify our profile. One, turn on our name. This name will be displayed in the store and will mark you as the creator of a GPT you will decide to sell. And the second option, add a verified domain. For example, if you're creating a GPT for your company or you work in a company that creates GPTs or you just want to redirect people to your website, put a link here and submit it. It will take some time to do all the necessary checkups, but eventually you will get your profile verified. and. If you are serious about selling GPTs in the store, I advise you to complete both of these steps. People will buy one of your GPTs, then click on the link and go to your website where they will find more GPTs. After we have verified our builder's profile, everything is pretty straightforward. You just create a GPT as usual and click on a down arrow on this green save button. To publish your GPT in the store, you need to choose everyone and click confirm. This way you will submit your GPT and start a process of verifying everything, after which people will be able to buy it. If you want to know how to create your custom GPT, be sure to watch our video about it. We made a comprehensive and detailed guide for you. I am sure the GPT store will be a huge success. Before it launched, there was basically no incentive for talented people to train advanced GPT. GPTs, but now, when everyone can publish their creations and earn money from it, the market will explode with thousands of super advanced and well-trained GPTs. This can also mean that some of the free GPTs that you're using right now could become unavailable anymore, especially the popular ones. So you better start creating and training your own GPT. But the launch of the GPT store isn't the only exciting thing that has happened in the world of AI. Recently, there has been a big leak about the AI from Apple. The leaker, Ukes, 112 has a good track record for the most part, so I think we should take this with a grain of salt. So on a Chinese website, Naver shared information that the new version of Siri will use generative AI and even shared the name of the internal project that revolves around AI and generative algorithms. 
Ajax. While his claims haven't been officially confirmed, they align with a growing consensus that Siri is poised for a dramatic transformation. A few months back, a well-known Apple leaker, Mark Gurman, said that AI from Apple is coming. Tech-wise, Ajax looks like any other LLM to me, and right now it's unclear how advanced it could be. According to this leaker, Ajax will bring a significant leap in Siri's capabilities. Conversations will feel more natural with Siri seamlessly adapting to users' preferences and context. This enhanced understanding will allow for more nuanced interactions, making Siri more versatile and helpful. If you don't care about Siri and Apple, you should still care about Apple's AI because it's gonna be something totally different from the competition. And there are a few reasons for it. One, Apple is super focused on privacy, so it will be safer to work with any sensitive data. Two, it will be available only on Apple devices. Three, it's gonna be embedded in the system itself and at some point become a core feature of the devices. UX 112 also hints at a new subscription service that will unlock even more advanced AI features for Siri. This could include personalized recommendations, more proactive assistance, and even the ability to generate creative content like poems or scripts. Despite all the uncertainties there are now, the underlying message from the leaker and other leakers is clear. Apple is betting big on AI. It may not be as multimodal like BART or ChatGPT, but it's definitely gonna have its perks unavailable to other companies. Maybe this will be the time of Jarvis-like assistance with good voice recognition and access to apps, because no matter how good ChatGPT gets, it will always lack the deep integration that Apple could do. But other competitors aren't resting too, with Google ready to launch another huge upgrade to Bard. Dylan Roussel, a known leaker, recently posted an X about some new features Google might be adding to its ChatGPT competitor. He found these details in the code of Google Bard's website one of the headliners in his reveal is an advanced version of BART dubbed BART Advanced, which could potentially be a premium offering. Russell's findings showcased through screenshots describe BART Advanced as a more capable large language model with advanced math and reasoning skills. This version is believed to leverage the power of Gemini Ultra. This is a significant step up from the Gemini Pro, which powers the current BART version. However, it appears that accessing BART Advanced might require a Google One subscription. The cost of this advanced service within Google One's various tiers remains a mystery. Russell also found a feature codenamed Motoko. It seems to allow users to create bots. The exact nature and functionality of these bots are still a bit hazy. Russell's screenshots show a sidebar labeled your Motokos and an option to create threads. Though he admits, I can't say what they mean by bots exactly, if they will be shareable or anything, but yes, Motoko is the code name for bots. I wonder if these bots are in any way similar to my GPTs. Another feature Russell showed is Gallery. This feature appears to help users unfamiliar with AI chatbots, allowing them to explore different topics to see what you can do with BARD. It seems to show sample prompts across various topics, explaining how BARD works. Good stuff, the more people know of AI, the better. Tasks is another feature Russell mentioned, but its purpose remains unclear. He speculates it could be a button to check on long-running processes, like generating a photo, some kind of a progress bar. Additionally, he noticed a sharing background foreground option, which seems a purely customization-focused thing. I don't think it's worthy of our attention. The last feature in Russell's Twitter thread is Power Up. This could be a tool for users to improve their prompts, kind of like the Prompt Perfect ChatGPT plugin that we featured in one of our recent videos. But don't get your hopes up just yet. It's important to remember that all this information is based on speculation at this stage. There is no guarantee that these features will see the light of day, but the possibilities they hint at are certainly intriguing. Google Bard more and more starts to look like a better version of ChatGPT. Even now, it can do certain things better than GPT-4. For example, sometimes Bard can write much better and more natural text than GPT-4. It has no cap on messages and is totally free. We have actually done a comprehensive comparison of Bard and ChatGPT, so be sure to check it out. Bard still has a long way to go Go, but at this rate, it will outsmart ChatGPT in half a year or so. And let's not forget that BART is multimodal, which means it was trained in different types of data, such as audio, text, and images. This allows it to have a wider range of possible features and capabilities. ChatGPT, on the other hand, was trained on text 
first, and all the additional voice and image related features were added on top of it. 2024 really looks like the year of AI with almost every major company investing huge amounts of money into the development of their own models. Even Apple cannot resist. Am I the only one excited about all this? Just think about it. By the end of this year, we could get a really smart virtual assistant with a deep integration of our phones and everything on them. We could get GPT-5, Bard Advanced, and who knows how many more more AI tools. And by the way, be sure to check out our video about GPT-5's super intelligence. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.